Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I am Tom Shalou. TV's Andy Levy's off. So let's check in with Charles Cook at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Charles? Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, newly released FBI forms show a State Department official offered the FBI a quid pro quo to change an email classification during the Clinton probe. Quid pro quo, of course, is Latin for some shady <laughs> Plus, the media turns on pudgy debate hero Ken Bone. Who could have guessed that a man who questioned a Clinton would have his life destroyed? <laughs> and finally, a Russian calendar features 12 months of Vladimir Putin pictures. It's the perfect gift to liven up your gulag prison cell. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Charles. Let's welcome our guests. She was named after the black keys on a piano. That's why she's so sharp. <laughs> Fox News contributor Ebony K. Williams. He looks like the bad guy from every action movie. Comedian Michael Vecchione. He's done more one-liners than Charlie Sheen. Comedian and master beardsmith Joe DeVito. And in South America, he's known as the Pigeon because he's always yelling, coo, coo, coo. <laughs> Sitting right next to me is former CIA covert operations officer and president of Diligence LLC, Mike Baker. Okay, let's start the show. All during Hillary Clinton's private email server scandal, we've heard the same story. I made a mistake. She claims she never sent classified information. Not true, said FBI Director James Comey. She claims she never lied. Not true, said the FBI. Now how will she respond to what newly released documents show that Hillary Clinton's State Department repeatedly pressured the FBI to mark certain Clinton emails as unclassified in order to protect her interests? And according to testimony from an unnamed FBI agent, the official, under, the, official the Undersecretary of State, Patrick Kennedy, offered a quid pro quo that if the FBI gave in to pressure to reclassify the emails, the State Department would, quote, reciprocate by allowing the FBI to place more agents in countries where they are currently forbidden. And you know FBI agents, they love their forbidden countries. <laughs> State Department spokesman Mark Toner denied the quid pro quo, but admitted they did request to reclassify the email, which the FBI refused to do. He offered this explanation. Classification is an art, <laughs> not a science. Yeah, so is corruption. Okay, Baker, oh. they admitted to both things. <laughs> they admitted to both things. Yeah, they, they did. said the no. uh, the email request they admitted to. They admitted that they offered to help out the FBI with their you know their assignments. Mm. But they said the two things weren't related. No, no, they're not. Look, you uh, <laughs> you we're gonna have to actually dig up decomposed bodies in Clinton's Chappaqua residence before anybody gives it apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing <laughs> seems to matter to people anymore. Uh, look, this is, this is um, this, just one more thing on top of everything else. I, I will say this much. The FBI, well, I have a huge regard for the FBI. I know everybody's on Comey right now because of his decision uh, that he made recently, and that's fine. But below that appointed level, the agents, everybody else at the FBI, Trust me, they do the right thing. And there's some discontent right now with the, the heat that they're taking as a result of Comey's decision. But with this, for the State Department to come after, and it's in the f***ing email, for the State <laughs> Department to come to them and say, we'll give you some more slots. I worked overseas a long time, yeah. the bulk of my adult life, and I know how this works. Those slots, whether it's for the Bureau or it's for the agency or it's for any other organization, are prized and very difficult to get because the State Department doles them out like candy. And so for the State Department to go to the Bureau and say, you know, if you just declassify this <laughs> and it's not an art, it's a f***ing science yes. to <laughs> determine what the classification is on a document. So for the State Department to go there and do this just shows the collusion between the State Department and the Clinton Foundation and Clinton and everybody else in, in the, I can't even begin to talk about this in an eloquent fashion as you can tell. I understand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is insane and but nobody's going to care and we're just going to march on and November's going to happen and we're all going to wake up in a couple of years and smack ourselves in the head because they're just going to keep growing the government and it's just I've Well, as someone skilled and eloquent. Yes. Um, 
No, I mean, I feel like what you're suggesting, Mike, is that there was corruption in the Clinton department. Uh, and, and I really don't know why we're just now hearing about this. Yeah, I, know. I mean, could you guys? No, no but in all seriousness, I, I will say, uh, you know, I'm a lawyer. Don't judge me. So we're very familiar with this thing called quid pro quo white. But normally, yeah. at least people have the decency to disguise it a little bit better, right? <laughs> I mean, my goodness, the, the bravado here. Really, could you just uh, do us the quiet favor of just calling this what it wasn't? But I mean, even that for me was a, ba a bit shocking. They said the two weren't related, but I think they even oh. admitted, if I'm correct, that they were on the same phone call. Yeah. It was the same call. Right. They admitted both things, but they said, but they were Prove just... Prove it! Wait, do you, remember, it! do you remember just recently, just recently when they said, <clears throat> we've got some hostages over here, and over here we've got pallets of cash. We moved the hostages here and the cash over here. It's the not a bank. ransom. They're not connected. No, no, well, not connected. Yeah, it's the same crap. I, I yeah. do think there was actually a, po a pause in the phone call, and then someone said, so what else is going on? And then <laughs> exactly. they actually, that's what they yeah. It's like a segue in comedy, it, isn't it? Just to let people know, hey, you know, uh, you know, I don't like to correct Mike, but the classification, <laughs> it's both an art, a science, and now a breakfast cereal. <laughs> so, <laughs> put them a little slack. Uh, like, nutritious uh, and delicious yeah. breakfast cereal. If you can, get, if you can yeah. force it down. <laughs> I like the idea of to, to have things declassified afterwards. That's like saying, oh, you've already had the lottery drawing. I'd like to pick some numbers. Yeah. You don't get to do that. You don't get to change the results once your die has already been cast. Although, do they ever, they, see, you, like you say, it's a science, but do they, if you can they ever go back and... Yeah, you can declassify a document. Uh, usually that happens about 30 years after the fact. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. yeah. And you know what? Yeah. The best is it doesn't matter, though. It's the content is king. So it could have been called... It could have been called green. The point is, Hillary Clinton, under her guise, should have known that the content in the email, regardless of what it was called, was indeed classified uh, in nature. Right. And that's, that's, that's right. what reigns. I, like she would be, I feel like she would be better using like a Snapchat <laughs> or at least like a, a Samsung phone that yes. after you send it, it just explodes. She did, she did say that's that. That's actually really a good idea. It's it, secure. At, at one point, she said she wanted to use Snapchat, and she made a joke about that, and then she had to kind of take it back because it wasn't so funny after all, was it? <laughs> She's but, not funny, But, Tom. Mike, why don't we, I think we all agree that this stuff it, is not going to stick to Hillary. No. And is it just because the election? Is it just... No, there's nothing sexual in it. It's not... I'm, telling, I'm not a CIA guy. Like, I don't follow this stuff. It needs some kind of a twist. I don't understand that something. Coming. There's nothing that sexual happens. in it. I'm not a CIA guy. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. No, because I don't I'm not those connections. Classified, either. declassified. <laughs> oh, like I, I don't know these you. fine I, lines. Yeah. You know, I know that uh, what makes good like media though. And if there was something sexual in the emails or something, like it would blow everything up. That's what yeah. you and need, it would right? go from. Yeah. 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 So like she didn't nudes. So like she had nudes. Yeah. If she had nudie pics. Yeah. Then. Or, or if Kennedy yeah. at the State Department had yeah. said to the uh, unnamed uh, FBI guy, "Look, <laughs> if you declassify this document, I'll grab your junk." Um, then yes. that, that's yeah. a better quick. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. yes, yeah. my exactly. that would be that's it. And that has a. Yeah. Yes, Does that mean in, in in CIA FBI terms? Does that mean what I think it means? Yeah, it means grab your junk. Yeah. 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 And guess what? It yeah. sticks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we're, we're very serious about that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Polls show that most voters think Hillary isn't trustworthy. Nobody knows why. But the Clinton campaign has a weapon to counter questions about her honesty and her character. That weapon? Betsy, Hillary's lifelong pal. And she has a powerful story to tell. She had broken up with this guy, whose name I can never, ever remember. Already, <laughs> Betsy seems like an unreliable witness. <laughs> anyway, Hillary had broken up with a guy before the senior prom, so Betsy fixed her up. So I fixed her up with someone in our class, and he came over before asking her, and he had his skateboard. <coughs> and. He came over with that and he said, uh, hey, you want to go ride skateboarding, Ryan? This Little did she know this was the test. If she passed this, then he'd ask her to the prom. So he took her over to Lutheran General Hospital, which is in Park Ridge, and it had this long, curving cement driveway that went down to the emergency room where all the ambulances would go. In. I mean, it was really scary. <laughs> Puts her on the skateboard and says, can you make it to the bottom? <laughs> but Hillary wasn't willing to perform tricks for a date. Can you make it to the bottom? And she did, so she got asked to the prom by him. Hmm. 
Okay, I guess she was willing to perform. <laughs> Is Betsy on her tricks. way to a methadone clinic? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where she's going. I'm just telling this long. Exactly. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I fell asleep like halfway yeah. through that. Yeah, yeah. you know, know what? Uh, yeah, it wasn't like that Alanis Morissette video, was it? It wasn't that exciting. Uh, Ebony, very little has changed uh, in regards to dating since those days. So what tricks did you perform to go to the prom? Oh, I don't do tricks. <laughs> I make men jump through hoops for me, Tom. <laughs> yeah, no, you yeah. know what, though? In effort number 1,000 to humanize Hillary Clinton that we saw there, um, the problem is that why do you men want women to just go through all these hoops just to prove that we like you? Why wasn't Hillary enough? I, that's the thing. Um, yeah. I've never. I don't make women skateboard. <laughs> and, you don't say you do want you them to go them riding do? skateboarding. But I, the thing is, Ebony, I think that the the surprising thing is that Hillary, this feminist, uh, she went ahead and she did yeah. whatever this guy wanted. So wait a minute. Are you saying yeah. you can't be a feminist and want to please your man? Well, in my experience, yeah. <laughs> Baker. <Touché. laughs> Baker, yes. uh, is yeah. this is this kind of video going to uh, humanize her? It's going to turn it around. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I already feel like I know her. Um, you think she go, has a shot? I want to go riding skateboarding with her. Uh, <laughs> look, I, you know, I don't want to say anything about this this lady. I don't know Betsy from from Adam, uh, but uh, uh, the way that she was uh, kind of droning on like that. Yeah. It, you, if you went into an interrogation with a high value detainee and they started doing that. You just assume they're obfuscating for a reason, and they're just hiding the real truth. Uh, she just uh, dissembling is the word I believe for interesting. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was my only reaction to to, to this. I'm, I'm sure she's telling the truth. I'm sure that Hillary, if we got to know her, we'd all want to hang out with her. Um, I just uh, I, I I don't understand this election cycle at all. This is just one more thing on top of everything else that makes me want to just. Oh, I already did move to Idaho. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> you did. Hey, I'm not Mike, done. do you you ride a board? I do not. Yeah. And, but this is a good point. This is when skateboards just came out, so it was like a new thing. It's like asking somebody to fly a drone now. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're right. So, yeah, and I like I like how Hillary did it. I like how that guy ordered her to do it. Kind of, uh, and she uh, did it. You think he said that? He said, get on my get on the skateboard. skateboard. Do you want to go to the prom or do you not want to go to the prom? <laughs> I know. We got, you know, the yeah. guy, he makes yeah. demands, right? Uh, look, Joe, uh, <laughs> Bill Clinton said about Hillary, she's still got the best friends that she had in grain school. That makes her, by definition, trustworthy, a reliable person. Do you think that's that, true? That is the definition of trustworthy, if you are still friends. What is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, she, I wasn't Bill asking her to be on the, uh, the skateboard. We know that. I think, I think it was interesting how everything that with Hillary's classified, even the name of the guy who broke up with her, Betsy, was like, I don't want, I can't remember the name. I can I never, ever remember. Oh, it's, who was that? I don't know why they bring up skateboarding, because we just watched Hillary do a face plant at the New York Memorial, so she's, she's doing a, a frontside grind with no skateboard there. You're supposed to think she was Bart Simpson. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, or she just went and took a header into a van. I've seen, I've seen vans at abductions that pulled things off smoother than that. Like, no, no, you should see her, you should see her on the half pipe. Up at, like she's like Tony Hawk. Come on, it's not even. Why are her lies so bad? I put this somewhere between um, under fire in Bosnia and named after Edmund Hillary on the Hillary. You don't believe that she can ride a skateboard, Joe? I don't think she can stand up without a crowd of people propping her up. <laughs> how, did, how did she go? Hacking, how did she go from uh, tubular to, tuberculo to tuberculosis in a couple of years? It's it. Come on, come huh? up with a better lie. Yeah. Stamp, they collected stamps together. I would yeah. I would believe that. <laughs> Okay, Philatelist. moving on. A philatelist, is that what it's called? Uh, philatelist. Uh, philatelist. Uh, philatelist. Yeah, I, I, I used, I used, I used to be one myself. Department on this? All right, moving on. Analogies. Is there anything they can't analogize? On Sunday, radio host Hugh Hewitt made an intriguing comparison. How did Mike Pence defend him this morning? I thought Mike Pence did a very good job. In fact, uh, I'm a Game of Thrones geek, and I was thinking there's Davos Seaworthy defending Stannis Baratheon uh, in the bad days of Stannis Baratheon. <laughs> <laughs> in the bad days. Last week, Mike Huckabee also made an analogy. He's like Captain Quint in the original movie Jaws. He's vulgar, he's salty, he might even get drunk, he's, he's just a, he doesn't a terrible... But, but hold on here. Okay. He's the guy who's going to save your butt and save your family. And so at the end of the day, when he kills the shark, you're happy about it. Now, Hillary is the shark. She's going to eat your boat. She's going to have open borders, immigration out the kazoo, and so the choice is, do you vote for Captain Quint, who's going to save your family, or do you vote for the shark? 
I think I think that that holds oh, up, don't God. you? I think both of those analogies have yeah. some problems, maybe. Yeah. But Mike, what do you think, Hillary? She's going to eat your boat. How, why does? Why do I don't, I'm not a slogan? big Jaws guy, but Game of Thrones. I think uh, I think that she's a dragon. Uh, Trump is a dragon. And uh, they were just, they're going to blow fire at each other. I think that's, I think that's what <laughs> that's, happens, so. They're just both dragons. I have no, everybody gets beheaded at the yes. end. It's a, it's a gigantic, it's a red wedding. Well, that's the thing is, Joe, they, it didn't turn out well for, you, both of those analogies, yeah. the Trump figure was killed in both of these. I think Mike Huckabee needs to keep the channel on TBS till the end of Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Some key plot points in the movie Jaws. And good luck saying to Donald Trump, you're going to need a bigger boat, because that would really piss him off. Yes. He said that to me, say, this boat's huge. This boat's fantastic. What do you mean I need a bigger boat? The biggest, the biggest boat they make. You need a bigger shark. Yeah, it's, um, I, well, I don't watch Game of Thrones, but from what I've seen, it's extremely violent. And uh, I would say, we wish things were going that well. <laughs> we can put these two in a walled city and walk away. Uh, uh, Baker, are you surprised that Hugh Hewitt is a, a Game of Thrones geek? Uh, no. Yeah. I've never seen Game of Thrones, uh, so I pass on that one. But I do remember being horrified uh, at that point in Jaws where I realized that the shark was for open borders. And, yes. uh, yeah. so that to me was shark. even scarier than the midnight swim of that lady who well, why got wouldn't, uh, tagged by the shark. Yeah, why yeah. wouldn't he be for open borders? The shark. He exactly. wants to well, exactly. yeah. right. Here to South Africa, to Australia, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Game of Thrones, don't know it, don't see it, don't watch it, don't care. Well, about the analogies. I mean, there, oh. this week, you <laughs> yeah. know, you've got Hillary now. She's got a new ad, and she's comparing uh, Trump to Biff. And other, you know, yeah. the uh, Karate Kid, Biff, I know. the various yeah. villains, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, wh I mean, it, well, sure. That's but that speaks to people. I mean, that's, and it, it speaks to the people that already believe that, right? I mean, they did find this. Look, I, I don't think anybody can really box this election cycle in anymore. I, I haven't heard really anybody talk um, in. Uh, you know, in intelligent terms about what's going on because nobody understands what's going on. We've gotten to a point where the system, I think, is broken. I mean, Trump talks about a rigged system. Well, frankly, this two-party system with endless amounts of money and an endless campaign season is the problem. Yeah. That's where we're at. We need to Isn't that what that he means up. by rigged? When he's talking about it, well, and they say, like, oh, I think he's we... talking about the media. I think I, 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 okay. that was my take on it. Maybe he's not, but my take was when he was talking about the rigged system, he's talking about how the media might have a cozy relationship more to the, with uh, the Democrats than with the Republicans. But I, I just think, you know, it, it, we're just, we're going to be doing this. This is going to be an endless cycle year after year after year until we get our hand, heads around the idea that we need uh, campaign finance reform and term limits. And until we do that, nothing is going to change with this system right now. Mike, I like the saying, term limits. Are you saying this is not like the Karate Kid? <laughs> was that what that meant? Because I just need, I need that simplified. I sweep the leg or not to sweep the leg. <laughs> Name the protagonist in uh, Karate Kid. Uh, the Cobra Kai. Yeah. No. What, what? I, don't, I don't even know what that meant. I, I thought I knew uh, the protagonist. You know what? Yeah, I don't Ebony, know. Ebony, help me here. I mean. Why do we need these analogies at all? As if the candidates themselves haven't... Hasn't Trump simplified it enough? <laughs> right? Well, look, it, I think Mike hit the nail on the head. Look, wow. this speaks to people. Um, let me get it straight. He's the bad guy. She's the bad guy. <laughs> They're both horrible villains. This is going to play out badly for everyone involved. The end. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I got from the past 18 months. That's a good summary. Could, could there be? Honestly, a, yeah. I think the analogy is going to become, geez, it's like Trump versus Clinton in here. Yeah. That's what the analogy is going to be for a hopeless situation with two terrible choices. <laughs> but the thing yeah. is, what this is democracy. These, it wasn't as if, yeah. you know, but, no mean, one yeah. stuck them in there, right? But 70, right. Well, what, 76 percent of Americans are very dissatisfied with both choices. And, so so that's the how did we get here and i think that's something we're all at me myself included we're all going to have to really be accountable for moving forward excellent all right coming up is ken bone not the hero i never believed he was america's debate sweetheart takes a fall just as i predicted you remember ken bone the portly everyman the media couldn't stop talking about. The New York Times opined, all hail Kenneth Bone. The Washington Post declared, America needed a hero. Kenneth Bone answered the call. <laughs> <laughs> but in the immortal words of Spider-Man, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. On Thursday, Mr. Bone did a Reddit AMA, Ask Me Anything, using his pre-fame screen name, Stan Gibson 18. This let users search his previous <laughs> posts. And there was a lot of unsavory stuff hidden in the, quote, bone zone. 
<laughs> Among the revelations, he likes Dragon Ball Z. Sleeps naked. Wow. Says Trayvon Martin's death was justified. Committed felony insurance fraud and loves porn featuring pregnant women. Well, okay. Referring to them as beautiful human submarines. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's take a look at the headlines. Ken Bone was a hero, now Ken Bone is bad. And Ken Bone is awfully kind of an awful guy. Hmm. <laughs> if only they would have listened to me. It's a lot of snobbery. Oh, look at the average American. I love him so much. America is not loving Ken Bone. They're making fun of him, and I don't like it. <laughs> See? Did wow. I call it, Ebony? You did. I'm like a prophet. Well, you know, I, I was on the same page with you two, Tom. This guy, he just rose too fast. You know what happens when that happens. Yeah. Come down fast. It's like the, he's like the like that, fiery yeah. phoenix. That's right. Yep. Yeah. I knew this was going to end badly for him. But we can't blame him. This came about because he made some comments on a website, which we're all encouraged to do. Bones just boning. <laughs> it's all he's doing. But look, what, what was so bad? So he likes pregnant women. Big deal. Yeah, yeah I mean, who, you know, who doesn't? Exactly. Everybody loves and And, you know, he's just a dude, right, mm -hmm. who uh, frankly um, made the mistake of putting himself out there. And in today's society, you're absolutely right. I mean, you put yourself out there, you, uh, you get one minute of upside, and the rest is nothing but downside. That's it. Yeah. That's Joe, it. But the, what do you think of my original theory? I didn't like the way that they made him a hero. It's yeah. not the bringing down. I didn't like putting him up, not because I don't like Ken Bone, because to me, it was New York and L.A. snobs who think they're better than him. Oh, of course. But I do like when we see the clip of you with the beard, it's like bizarro, Tom. <laughs> Coming in, with like when they made the old Star Trek episode with the goatee. <laughs> That's right. Um, I know. You know, I, I tend to be meaner with the beard, don't I? Yeah, it brings it out. It does. <laughs> I think it's interesting that he used was this the, the screen name Stan Gibson eighteen. He's the only person whose fake name was less pornographic than his real name. <laughs> you know, if he was becoming Kenneth Bone, they would have been like, "We're trying to run a family comment section." Stan um, Gibson eighteen. Yeah. I think uh, you make an excellent point that uh, from you. time to time we uh, the the world says, "Give us a Kenneth Bone, give us a Susan Boy," and we say, "Oh look, they're just like us." Now let's kill them because they're not pretty like other celebrities. Yeah. Do we bring down uh, Boyle, Susan? Oh, Boyle? They, couldn't, they couldn't wait to rip on her once her little moment was over. But I will say this in defense. She like pregnant women too? <laughs> Who doesn't? Who hasn't lost themselves in a web yeah. of pregnant pornography? But I don't want to defend him, but I will say I can guarantee that whatever he said was not locker room talk because I don't believe he's been in a locker room in a long, long time. That's right. Maybe a steam room. It's possibly taking a schwitz, but yes. not. Uh, you know, whenever I go in a steam room, there's a Ken Bone type guy. <laughs> Just the sweater. Wearing a sweater. sweater. Wearing the sweater. Yeah. He does look amazing. He looks like a pedophile in a bullfight. <laughs> he really, he looks like the Kool-Aid guy. He, he's unbelievable. Uh, I just I didn't think this guy was that great to begin with, honestly. Like, I don't even think it was West Coast, East Coast snobbery, Tom. I just think this is how desperate America has been for a hero moment that this guy got. But Bro, hero was the that. captain of your bowling oh, team. Look, yeah, I was I was traveling when no. this happened. When he <laughs> stood up and made it, and I when I, the first picture I, I I actually thought it was Horatio Sands from. from <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was yeah. a sketch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Who would? Yeah. Except he didn't start yeah. laughing at himself right, halfway exactly, through. Exactly. But yeah. look, the the thing is that he didn't. He asked a question. It wasn't that big of a deal to me. There was nothing to base his hero status on other no. than his looks, which to me were yeah. people laughing at. Making him. fun of him. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, but the left could say that he was undecided. And so they liked it because, you know, here's a guy we can get behind because he's not committed yet. Yeah. And well, so, yeah. I don't know about that, though, yeah. Mike Baker. A lot of people yeah. on my Facebook timelines that are super progressive mm. were mad at anyone in the audience. Like, how could you still be undecided? Yeah. At the, they were super angry Bill Maher about that. did a whole yeah. thing on him, oh, ripped yeah. him to shreds because he was yeah. 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 undecided. <laughs> okay. I think, I think yeah. Ken Bone is us whether we like it or not. Oh, boy. That's a, a little bone in all of us. Isn't there? <laughs> not me. Okay, let's go. Coming up. <laughs> I'm talking with Charles Cook. And don't forget, I gotta make myself there's laugh. a new Red Eye podcast available right now. Subscribe on iTunes and on foxnewsradio.com. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, I thought you were talking to me. This is my, no, the, no, this is Mike. America. You're Michael. No. Oh, the oh, other Mike. Sorry, you're ah, Michael. the other Mike. So the other this Mike. This could be confusing for the Mike. control room. That's all right. Yeah. Um, I wonder, given your opening diatribe, if you expect to be among the bodies you mentioned buried <laughs> at the Clinton residence. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I tell you what, you get you get outside the box and you speak ill will of of the Clintons, and uh, next thing you know, you're in the end zone at Giant Stadium. <laughs> so I, I know none of those words. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ebony, is it American rugby, I think. Uh, Ebony, you said that you were familiar with uh, quid pro quo, and you said that after I defined it as some shady <laughs> That's some confidence. Well, first of all, I am confident. Charles, <laughs> uh, second of all, well, you know, I'm a lawyer. That's what we do. It's called contract law. Shady <laughs> give, you got it. Well, you know, those are your words. Uh, mm. I would rephrase those as uh, mutually beneficial. Okay. <laughs> you could be my defense lawyer. Then. <laughs> Thank you. Um, seriously, though, you said you're a lawyer, and that's why you know about Latin, do you, do you think you're better than me and everyone else? No, because um, I would, except for you have an accent. Right. So, no, and I, not uh, you. Latin was actually my first language. Okay, great. Um, Ebony, you said Hillary should have known what she was doing. She did, right? Of course she did. No, and I've called her out on that a million times. Of course okay. she did, and, and so did everyone around her. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael, not Mike. Michael. Yes, yeah, you <laughs> like said, the archangel. Um, that's exactly the image I had in mind. Um, that's how I, actually, how I get to sleep, funnily enough. Um, you said there is nothing sexual in the Hillary emails. Um, are you prepared to risk that, given WikiLeaks? Yes, I am. Okay. I believe I nothing say, sexual will be found. When you said that, I have never been as strongly in favor of classification. <laughs> Mike Baker, uh, uh, you suggested that agents often say, if you declassify this, uh, I'll grab your junk. Does, does that work for you? <laughs> it used to, uh, back in the old days, yeah, sure. Um, it, it, it's a persuasive argument. I mean, it, you know, it depends on, on you know, <laughs> the grip you use. If you use a Kung Fu-like oh grip God. on the junk, then it can, yeah, it can be very persuasive. Are you a left or right-hander? It depends on, you know, how you're, what, you got to go with what you go, it's field expediency. So, <laughs> depending on what the fight calls for, you got to use there, your yeah. left or right hand, have to be equally ambi, uh, thing. Yeah. Ambidextrous. Yeah, <laughs> you and me, Charles, we're both well versed in the English language. We are men of the world. Yes. <laughs> uh, you probably more than me. Yeah. Uh, Ebony, you asked why men would ask women to jump through hoops. Yeah. Why wasn't Hillary enough, you asked. I, I think you've probably answered your own question there. Uh, wasn't, wasn't it possible he was hoping she couldn't do it? I didn't think of that, Charles. Yeah. Pop, prop, you're right. That was clearly what he I was like this for. one. You're right, Charles. Well done. We're men of the world. This is going well. <laughs> so, Joe, I get the impression you don't believe that Hillary can do a dark side grind in pop shove it followed by a kip flick twist. I'm sorry, I don't understand I, anything you're saying with that I. Game of Thronesy voice of yours there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> please, please translate the post-war of 1812 so I can I'll follow do along. I'll do that. Uh, Tom, it's it's philatelist. Philatelist. Um, and philatelist. as you know, uh, that's from the French uh, word philatelie, uh, which was a replacement word uh, for timbromani, uh, which is a combination of philo, which means love of, obviously, and atelier, which means exempt from taxes. Oh! Oh, that Damn. is fantastic. Wow. For Texas, yeah. So, uh, wow. glad we cleared that one up. Uh, Michael, have you <laughs> how, ever... How many viewers do you think we just lost? <laughs> you know what? But for everyone we lost, we gained two. That's true, that's true. <laughs> for those who speak Greek. Um, Michael, have you ever seen Game of Thrones? Because it was, it was like, a bit like listening to Donald Trump talking about conservatism, just random words <laughs> taken from the ether. I have watched Wedding, him. beheading. I have watched I hit all the points, I think. Yeah. You've watched one episode, right? No, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen all of the seasons. Oh, I mentioned right. the dragons, the red wedding. I hit all... What did I leave out? Yeah. What, what, what did you leave out? I mean, out? maybe it wasn't Swords. cohesive. I just <laughs> hit the points. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mike and, and Tom, you said sharks are for open borders. Yes. Yeah. That's actually true. Uh, yeah. Great white sharks can often travel 2,800 miles uh, from ocean to ocean. Charles speaks the truth. There That's exactly right. Democratic voters in the making. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Uh, you know what? If we get a chance, we're going to redistrict the oceans, though. So <laughs> things will work out in our favor. Mike, yeah. you said, you, you said that uh, Trump uh, was, was talking about the media when he said the election was rigged. But that was he, my take. He has talked about polling places being rigged. <sighs> yes. Yeah. He has gone that extra step. My, I, I don't, I, honestly, I, I don't listen to him as much as I should. 
Uh, so I That's stand not corrected. a sentence I've heard much this election. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there could be Charles. Yeah. It's hard to hear sound bites. It's hard to find sound bites right. of Trump. To be Charles, fair. what about those? There are those polling places where the Democrats get 100%. Don't you think there's some shenanigans sure. going on? At, at the margins. But he was essentially suggesting that the entire election could be rigged. Yeah, which is nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ebony, you said we should all be held accountable for Trump and Clinton being the nominees. Uh, do, do I get counted in that, or can I invoke <laughs> foreigners' privilege? Well, as a lawyer, I like invocations of privilege, Charles, so I'm going to give you that. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> sure. Tom, you, uh, you said you were meaner with a beard. I, I don't think anyone would, would say that. Um, Mike, do you want to grab his junk and see whether it's true? I'll be damned. Charles is just right over there. Wait a second. I've been, oh, Could okay. you use your left hand? I think it's uh, it would be my left hand in this configuration, yes. So, uh, okay. But no, I'm not going to because uh, I have a lot of respect for Tom and, and he doesn't currently, as far as I know, have any classified information that we need to get from him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and finally, uh, Mike, you, Michael, you said that Ken Bone looked like a, a pedophile at a bullfight. <laughs> pedophile? Maybe, maybe you... Uh, uh, maybe you have watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. All You're right. all done there? All done. Oh, Thanks a lot. Char Does anyone ever call you Charlie? Uh, yeah, no, a lot of people. It's half and half, really. Charlie Chuck? Charlie. Uh, oh, that's, well, that's pushing it, but I'll let you get away with it. <laughs> Chaz? Um, only uh, in certain circumstances. Okay. Well, thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. Coming up! 2017 just got sexier. I'll explain after the break. The Vladimir Putin 2017 calendar is out, and it's packed with Putin. <laughs> a photo of Vlad appears every month, all 13 of them. Yep, Russia has one more month than us between January and February. Did you know that? I did. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. We've captioned them for you. It's almost midnight on your doomsday clock. Where is your Reagan now, America? <laughs> I crush pots like dissidents. I'm sorry, dear friend, but you should not have crossed me. <laughs> I have your son. You have my instructions. <laughs> the Russian bear necessities. Putin on the Ritz. <laughs> and lastly, I have your kitten. You have my instructions. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Ebony. Yes. Uh, why, why does Putin do things like this? Well, I don't know. It reminded me of how Oprah is uh, on the cover of all of her magazine issues yeah. because they're essentially the same. They, they are. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, she's on the co every single month's cover for like seven years now. I know. It seems yeah. egotistical, but I, again, I bet if someone Which else... Which is branding. It's just reinforcing the, the brand. Is they're not going to buy it unless she's on the cover. She <laughs> that's knows what, that, right? Exactly right. And that's what Putin's saying. He Putin knows, knows he's selling this. And this is brand reinforcement. That's why he's there all 13 months, right, Baker? Yeah. No, you know what? Um, look, we've, we've spent uh, a lot of years um, not reading Putin correctly. Right? <laughs> all you need to know about Putin is that he is a very old school KGB officer. He uh, meant it when he said several, several years ago that the greatest single tragedy of the 20th century was the collapse of the Soviet Union. Yep. And he spent all his time uh, since then trying to reconstruct it in some fashion. Reconstitute just, uh, the old yeah. glory. In, in, in a variety of ways. Not just territory, but, you know, influence, power, etc. And the calendars. And the calendars. And the calendars are a big part of this. That's where I was going with this. Yes. Yeah, the, so the calendars, everybody knows, you know, uh, you know if you're a dictator... Uh, if you don't have strong calendar game, you're not staying in power. Big time. Yeah. That's right. You know, Vecchione, would you? Uh, uh, you know, what's your what's your style on calendar? Would you get a Would you get a Putin calendar? If Rocky IV has taught us anything, yes, yes, it's that Russians are evil and they're on steroids and they cheat and they, they should be watched. Thank do. God, there was an Italian, right, Rocky, yeah. to take him down. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think it, it's helpful. Like, each month you know what he's doing. He's like, it's December. What's he doing? Oh, he's petting a kitten. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God he's not poisoning a spy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Much right? like our potential president, he is not afraid to grab the... Uh, okay. <laughs> we have... Uh, I'm sorry, was that wrong? Uh, it was wrong. <laughs> So okay. you like, I thought the kitten was cute. It did. It humanizes Putin, doesn't it? I think Russians are lucky because I think they have exactly the leader they want. <laughs> I think they've got the guy... He's, and, you know, his popularity is in the 90s, he's isn't it? fantastic. <laughs> and I tell you, when it comes that month where he's petting that kitten, you better be petting a damn kitten. Exactly. When I see you out there, it's going to be a lot of trouble. That's right. Yeah. Baker, yeah. you know, uh, there is a, bite, a Mike Baker calendar. It's a hot seller, 2017. Oh, 
Let's take a look. Let's look at the preview here. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. That's yeah. called. Uh, what do you? What's that one? That was. You know. You got remember the, that? Yeah. Oh, look at oh, that. Fireman. That fireman, uh, yeah. fireman, uh, Mike. Fireman that's post, pretty yeah. hot. Oh, there's, there's the wanker the charts. Wow. That's for specialists. Yeah. Some people yeah. love the wanker. Looks like ISIS yeah. has you on that yeah. one. Yeah. Look at this pencil. Was, look at that. It kind of looks like Brett Favre there. What's that about? Yeah, it's a pencil. It was a rainy day, wasn't it? Oh, look at that. God. That's like, yeah, you know, yeah. swipe r left on that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Right. Is it right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. I don't That's going to be at Costco. So uh, <laughs> if you're looking for something for Christmas, I suggest, you know, go to Costco, demand your uh, CIA hunks calendar. Yeah. Uh, I'm told yeah. none of the money goes to charity, Mike. <laughs> no. Free market. It, uh, yeah. I, you know what? It, it uh, all goes to the Clinton Foundation. I'm, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say. Just so yeah. I didn't mean it to, alive. but it's where most money goes nowadays. All right. Coming up, a bedtime story. New research shows that women form a personal opinion on a man based on the amount of facial hair on his face. Australian researcher asked thousands of women to view images of men with various stages of facial hair, clean shaven, light stubble, heavy stubble, and full beards, and had them rate their attractiveness. Stubble was judged the most attractive and got the highest rating for a short-term relationship while a full beard was more attractive for a partner in a committed relationship. The researchers noted, sexual selection via female choice has shaped the evolution of male ornamentation in many species. I've always said that. <laughs> so let's test this thesis using Twitter reaction to my new clean-shaven look. What happened to Tom Shalhoub's <laughs> bel belated beard? I was on board with the Wolfman do. Hmm. Tom Shalou, don't tease us about the facial hair. I miss the beard. Tom Shalou, please grow the beard back, please. Damn high time, Tom Shalou. The beard made you look like an uncool dad trying desperately to be cool. <laughs> Tom Shalou facts. Tom Shalou won his beard in a card game with some 12-year-old boys. <laughs> that didn't end well. Uh, but Baker, did you notice something? The women. They like yeah, the beard. The two, like the two beard. guys on the end, guys didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, no, Mississippi love. She liked the beard. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm married to uh, the world's most wonderful woman, and she does not like the beard mm. at all. Uh, what so about when you're unshaving? You got that rough look. You I like got the that. rough look. Yeah, the stubble I can get away with for about three days, and then it starts moving into beard territory. Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, to be fair, if I just go like, mm, like this, it shows up. Yeah. And, you know, so. Um, but no, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't had a, I, I had a mustache. Back in uh, in the '80s, mm -mm. and and, uh, yeah. and 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 that was a good look for me. <laughs> The yeah. mustache was a good look. Mustache, it yeah. was classic. Yeah, that was that was and that was the time to have it. If yeah, you were going to have a mustache by itself, <laughs> have it then. Tom Selleck yeah. did it. He wore it well, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Joe, like what? You you've gone from beard. You were Duck Dynasty for a while. Now you're back. Throwing it out. Yeah. Well, uh, as a modern male, this is pretty much the only manly thing I've done within the past 15 years or so. So. <laughs> but did you notice with the girls? Did they like you better with the beard? I, you know, not the big beard, but the chicks. Uh, it does throw them off to think. Someone asked me if I was uh, a lumber sexual. They said lumber. <laughs> Sexual lumber dude. sexual, yes. <laughs> I told them I am not, but I am uh, lumber curious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay, <laughs> Vecchione, what do you do? You know, you, you wear it sometime. You go with the unshaven. Women like the unshaven. It's the bad boy thing, right? Yeah, it is. I had a goatee for a while. I tried to split the difference. Yep. You know, because I think full beard is too ISIS right now. Mm -hmm. uh, right yeah, now. full. Oh, you think you. But now you, I have a new thing, yeah. which is uh, ear hair. <laughs> so, and That's nose right. hair, which is, as I'm getting older, is getting out of control. So maybe I can. You know what? Let me stubble. give you a tip. Like yeah. Ear stubble. They the women love ear stubble. Do they? Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and, and shave down the ear and then let it go three or four days. They love it. <laughs> He's setting you up. Don't listen to that. That's a horrible Ebony setting says, no, she's beautiful. What is it? Um, the beard or no beard? What do you well, think? Well, you can attest to this. I told you unsolicited in the green room when you had the beard. Yes. Shalou. Yeah. Good look. I know. It was a good thing. Um, this I is. Wanted, I wanted solicitation. Th 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 this, <laughs> is, this is fine, the clean shaven thing. Um, it's fine. I, it's fine. Um, I like a little facial it's hair. Over. But maybe it's where I am age-wise. Shows up. We're leaving. You know, it's, we gotta go. No, no, stop it. It just shows a bit Goodbye, of... Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>